Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall from the last video, it was running a little bit too long and so I decided to split into two portions and I will resume where that video left off in just a second here. So if you haven't seen that last video, check it out now because it is definitely important. Okay, thanks guys. Let's go to main. Uh, we haven't been here in a really long time, but we basically want to create another screen that we can switch to uh, whenever the game is not playing. So we want to use the same window. But as you can see, all of our game logic is sort of tied up in this window. So we sort of want to separate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new class and we will call this the main menu. Basically, this is going to be almost an exact copy of the window, except with a lot of functionality gone. So we'll just copy and paste that. We'll call that main menu. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start removing a lot of the stuff that we don't need. So we want the window to be the same size, that's fine. We can have a key listener, that's fine too. We can get, uh, we don't need to set those in here. We can set that just for the game. We don't need any of this stuff. This is all game related. So we're removing everything game related. This is all up to here. Game related, game related. We'll keep the key listener. We will keep graphics too, which is just our graphics. We can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this. Okay, we still have our loop, which is the game loop, which should run fine for the screen as well. Okay, and so basically what we're gonna want now is we're gonna want a simple mouse listener, some way to listen uh, for where the mouse is on the screen. And then we're gonna wanna tell uh, if it's over one of the buttons. So first we need a couple of buttons. So let's add a few text elements to our screen. So we'll say public text start game and exit game. So those are gonna be our two buttons, you know? And then we'll say this dot start game equals a new text. And then we will give that the text, which is start game, the font, new font, times new Roman. And we'll say uh, font dot plain size. We'll say 40 seemed like a good size. And then we're gonna need the X and Y position so we'll say constants dot screen width, if we can spell constants right, dot screen width over two minus, and then this font size is 40. The string size is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 10 times 40 is 400. Half of that is 200. So we'll just subtract 200 out of that. Uh, y, we'll say constants dot screen height over two. That should draw in the center of the screen, uh, just basically in the center. So we'll have the start game and then this dot exit game equals new text, exit, new font, uh, yep, times new Roman. We'll do font dot plane, size 40, constants dot screen width over two minus, and that one has one, two, three, four times 10, four times 40 is 160 over two is 80. Okay, there we go, so 80. And then we'll say constants dot screen height over two plus, and we'll do 60, which will give us a little bit lower than the start game with a 20 pixel buffer. Uh, maybe we'll make that 50, we'll see. We'll see how it looks. Cool, let's draw these inside of our draw method real quick. We'll say start game dot draw g2 exit game dot draw g2 Let's see if this all looks right well it's not going to draw anything because if we go to our main we're still starting it with the window so let's say main menu menu equals new main menu and then we'll start it with the menu thread instead of starting the window so now if we F10, we get a null pointer exception. Let's see what that is. Java 26 in main menu. Okay, so it's saying G2 is the null pointer here. We forgot to add this. So we can say G2 equals cast it to the graphics 2D, get graphics, and that is our G2. So let's retry this. There we go. And then we see we get start game, exit. Start game looks like it's over way too far to the left. So I did some sort of miscalculation there. Let's change this minus 200 to a minus 100. See how that looks. Almost there. Let's try 150. Try 
try one more time. There we go. Sort of close. A little bit more to the right. Okay, let's see. So that would be minus 140. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So those are like sort of centered and it's very simple. Um, we might want to, let, let's do a title too. Just make this really nice. So really nice as in like as nice as this is going to get for Pong. You could actually make this way nicer. And I encourage you to do that if you want to. But since this is just an intro to game programming, I am doing it as simple as possible and just making it very simple. So we'll make this font size like 100. We'll say constants.screen width over two minus, and let's see, Pong has four, so we're gonna make it about the same as exit. We'll make it, ooh, and this is gonna be different though since the font size is 100. So we'll say this is 200, should be right, we'll, we'll see. And then we'll make it at Y level 100. We'll see, how does this look? And then go down here and draw that. Pong.draw G2. This looks good, but it's just a little bit to the left and not low enough. So we'll switch this to like 180. Switch this one to like 300. And just tweak these to make it look good on whatever you're doing. That's way too low. So we'll say 200 and 160. And that's just about good. Maybe a little bit more to the right. We'll say 150. Five. There we go, that looks good. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna add a hover state and we wanna detect when the user clicks on either of these. So doing that is not too difficult. We just need to figure out where it is in the text and all that. And we can actually see, so if we go down here and we say start game dot text, well, that's not gonna give us anything. So if we say, Go into our text class. We have this text, we have this font, and we need to calculate the width and the height of it. So let's actually do that in here as well. So we'll just say public double width height. And then we'll say this dot width equals, and we'll say the font dot size minus, or no, font size times the length of the text. So text dot length and that should give us the appropriate width and times yeah the font size times the length okay so that should be good and then this dot height will just equal the font size and then that should be good give us the width and the height and now we have that stored in here as well and then inside our main menu we're going to want to set up a simple mouse listener so just like we did the key listener we're going to create a mouse listener we'll call that ml mouse listener equals new ml we will go into here create a new class call this ml and this is going to extend the mouse list mouse adapter and then it's going to implement the mouse motion listener so this should get us all of the appropriate methods that we need okay and then within here we can override some methods that are inherent in these guys so We'll say public void mouse pressed mouse event e do nothing for now add override we'll say public void mouse released lowercase mouse released mouse event e and these are methods that are just inherent in the mouse adapter in the mouse motion listener class so these will get called whenever the mouse is pressed or released on the window itself so this will be useful for us and then we can just sort of tweak them to fit the needs that we have. So we'll say mouse moved and this is mouse event E. Okay. And then we're going to have, we're going to keep track of whether it's pressed and where it's at on the screen. So we'll create a couple variables up here. We'll say boolean is pressed equals false. We will say public double X and Y. We'll set those to we'll leave those null event initially. Uh, let, let's set them to zero just in case we don't want to have any no, no pointer exceptions for no reason so then we will have on mouse pressed is pressed equals true on mouse released is pressed equals false on mouse moved 
we will say uh, this dot x equals e dot get x. So this will give us the position of the x, the position of the mouse x, and then we'll say this dot y equals e dot get y, and this will give us the position of the mouse in the y coordinates. Okay. And then we'll have a couple of methods that we can use. We'll say double get mouse x. This will just return this dot mx, this dot x, and then we'll do public double get mouse y, return this dot y. So just return those, and then one last one, public boolean is mouse pressed, and that will return this dot is pressed. Okay, nice and simple. This should all work out fine. Let's go to our main menu, test this real quick. We'll just print out inside the update method dot out dot print line mouse listener dot get x and the y. So system dot out dot print line mouse listener dot get mouse y. And so we should see a bunch of different values as we move the mouse over the screen. Okay, and so what were we forgetting to do? We were forgetting to add these two functions, which we're just adding the mouse listener. So right now uh, that wasn't working because we didn't even have it listening to anything. So we'll add a mouse listener. We will also add a mouse motion listener and they will both point to the same entity, which is our mouse listener. And then when we go to our print line, we should see when we start this up, we see the values change down here as we move the mouse across the screen. Okay. Uh, one other thing I noticed was we forgot to comment this out. So this is actually creating two different windows. Let's just comment that out real quick. And so now when we start it, there's not that weird white flash. Everything looks good. Cool. Now we'll add a couple of methods inside of here that will simply check to see if the mouse is over any of the text. So we'll say if um, mouse listener dot get mouse X is greater than, and we will check for the start game first, start game dot X and mouse listener dot get mouse X is less than well plus yeah so if the if the mouse's x is greater than uh, wherever the start game's x is and the mouse's x is less than the start game yep start game x plus the start game dot width then we know it's in the x coordinate and then we want to make sure that it's also bounded in the y coordinate too so we'll say and mouse listener dot get mouse y is greater than start game dot y and mouse listener dot get mouse y is less than start game dot y plus start game dot height and then we know that's hovering over that and what we'll want to do if it's in this hovering state is we'll want to change the color to like a light gray so we'll say then start game dot font equals new font well actually we can just change it inside of the text so right now text does not take in any sort of color it just makes the color white here we'll actually change it right over here to take in a color and we'll say that's the color and then up here we will have a public color variable color and we'll initialize this to color dot white that way we won't get any errors in our other classes that use this method and then we can simply set the color up here and change the color through here and so we go to our main menu class we're going to get an error up here we just need to pass in a color so we'll say color dot white copy that paste that down here paste that down here we should be good and then if the mouse listener is hovering then we'll say that the start game dot color equals color we'll say new color and then we want to make it close to white but not quite white so we'll say like uh, 230 230 230 and IntelliJ very cool you can just click over here and actually choose so we want to make this a little bit darker right there and that gives it the color we'll say choose and it changes our RGB values right there which is just really cool makes it really easy we'll say else start game dot color equals color dot white cool let's run this if we move the mouse over it we should see it turn gray turns out we forgot to set the color in here. So we actually have to say um, inside of our text class, we need to actually draw it according to the color that it's at. So now if we go back here, we should see it run fine. When we hover, it turns gray. And if you notice, the Y value is a little bit off. 
because it looks like what's actually happening is uh, the Java draw string is actually centering that. So we'll say that if it's greater than start game dot y minus start game dot height over two, and it's less than start time got y plus start game dot height over two, and that should make it look right. Let's see what happens. There we go. And then we see that when it's over there, it's hovering. And so we'll do the same thing for the exit real quick. Basically, just copy this. And then we'll hover over this control R to replace and we'll replace all the start game in this selection with exit, which I believe is what we call the exit game. And so we'll just replace all in this selection, which is clicked here, replace all. And now that should be working for the exit as well. Exit, start game, works perfectly. Now we want to check and see if they press while we're in here. So while they're in here, if we say if mouse listener dot is mouse pressed, that means they've clicked it, we will want to start the game. So we want to return to main and we want some way to tell main that, hey, it's changed the game state from the main menu to the window. So we will actually set up a very simple static method in here say void change state and so literally all this is going to do is it's just going to choose between uh, 0 and 1, 0 being the main menu, 1 being the uh, game and then it'll switch whatever thread we're running and kill the other thread. So we'll say change state and we will say um, int new state up here we will have a static integer public static int and we will say state equals zero and then we'll say state equals new state right here nice and simple and then we actually want to just uh, kill whatever thread has been running so we will say start a thread up here so we'll say this thread um, main thread and then we will actually instead of saying thread t1 equals this new thread we'll say main thread equals a new thread with the menu and then we'll say main thread dot start here so then we can literally kill the thread inside of here and kill that window and then create a new window which is whatever the state is so and then we'll want to kill this thread and so in order to kill that thread we have this little flag up here that basically says is running um so we're saying while is while true we'll change that to while is running and have a variable up here public boolean is running equal to true uh, set this while it is running we want to do this and then if we call public void stop and is running equals false this should stop the loop this should exit and then up here we will say return uh, jump out of this method should stop the thread so let's see what happens when we go to our main menu and we say uh, main we'll say uh, menu so First of all, if the new state equals one, we'll, we'll go up here. If new state equals one and the current state equals zero, so we're in the main menu, we're switching to the gameplay, then we want to say menu dot stop. So we will actually make this a global main menu to this class. And we'll put that right there. And we have to make this static. Okay, and then we can say menu equals new menu up here. Menu dot stop should stop that. And then we should see it stop. So let's see what happens when we hit the play button. Did we, we might not have hooked this up. Let's go to the main menu, make sure this is all hooked up. So if the mouse is pressed, we want to say uh, main dot change state to one, okay. And then up here, this should trigger this whole switch right here. So we hit start game. And as you can see, it paused because it's no longer working. So we just need a way to clean up this window as well. So, so then if we go to our run method, we should be able to type in this dot dispose, which will dispose of this window. So we'll try this one more time, start game. And you see that the window disappears, which is good because then when we can create a new window, which will be the game. So we'll say window 
we will get rid of this go up here say public static window window and then we'll say window equals new window and then we'll say main thread dot start window and so what's this going to say main thread cannot be applied to window oh we'll say main thread equals a new thread window and then main thread dot start there we go and so this should start a new thread with the new window and start the game so we hit play and we get the game and the ai still isn't working because we never changed that from the last video so we will fix that in a second or from this video but then we have the main thread start and so we'll simply do something similar for uh the gameplay so if new state equals zero and state equals one which means we're switching from gameplay to the menu then we will say uh, window dot stop and we will create a method for that in the window class so we'll go in here real quick say public void stop is running equals false clean this up real quick this will take is running go up to the top create a variable up here we will call this public boolean is running equals false equals true <laughs> want that to be true initially okay is running is false then down here we'll say this dot dispose and return so we return it exits out same thing so then we can say window dot stop menu equals new main menu and then main thread equals new thread with the menu main thread dot start state equals new state and we can actually change this we will just put this down here so that it goes for either one of them so now we should have that happen for either one and then inside window uh, we can just simply check in our win condition which is inside of actually ball um, this is our win condition then we can say window dot change state or main, sorry, main dot change state. Then we will change it to zero. If either side wins, change this guy right here too. And so we should see if we hit play and then we're gonna lose, goes back, perfect. And we hit start game again and it's not working. Okay, so it turns out that uh, swing applications are not thread safe so you may have noticed that there's a little bug when you press start game and it ends the game and then you hit start game again it just goes back to this that's because the swing application is not thread safe so it's holding on to references to that whole game state that we just got rid of and there doesn't seem to be a good way to get rid of it so instead of going back to the main menu when the player loses we'll simply switch it so that uh, it closes the window and ends the game and in the future we will address this issue with other videos but for now this should be uh, satisfiable for this game so we'll go into the ball class and instead of changing the state we'll just say um, we'll say uh, window dot stop okay we'll, we'll change the state so we'll say change state and then we will change it to zero but then in our main class, instead of trying to spawn a new thread and everything again, we will just say menu.stop, and that should dispose of it, and then it should be over. So if we go back into our game, when you hit start game, <laughs> well, we want to change it so that it only does that on the second go around. So we'll have a whole new state here. Um, else if new state equals two, then we will just say window.stop, and we'll say if window does not equal no window dot stop if menu does not equal null menu dot stop so we'll just stop everything so this will be the state that just like kills everything and so then we'll go back into our ball class and then we will say uh, change the state to two and so this should take care of just closing everything down so if we hit start game 
starts, closes it down, just stops the program completely. And then we'll also add that in to the main menu under uh, the exit. So then we'll just say if mouse listener dot is mouse pressed, then we'll say window dot nope main dot change state uh, to two. Okay, and then that wraps it up. And so if we hit exit, exits out of the game. Then we'll hit stop and rerun. And then if we hit start game, it starts the game. And then we can just enable the AI one more time. So we'll go back into the window class, um, allow the AI to update, go into the constants class, change the winning score to 11. And now you have a complete Pong game with a menu screen. And you can play it and go against the AI and see who wins. And you can tweak the different parameters and everything. So, I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, this is the first Pong game that we've been creating. Uh, the next series that I'm thinking of doing is about Tetris. And so I can actually show you what that will turn out to be like. I'll give you a little sneak peek right here. And then after that, we're actually going to be doing a physics engine. So I'm really excited about that one. So I'll show you the Tetris game first. Okay, so I said Tetris, but I really meant Snake. <laughs> so this is the Snake game so far. And this is what we will be creating in the next video. And if you see, we grab the food and we grow. And right now there is no detection to see if you hit yourself or the walls, but we will add that in. And so this is going to be the next series, which I hope you guys will also enjoy. And then after that, we also have a physics engine. I'll give you a sneak peek of what that's going to look like as well. Okay, and so here is the physics engine so far, and this is really cool. So we have all these balls that we can pick up, and you can see that they interact with the other balls. And then you can actually drag it, and you can hit all the other balls and they interact with each other. So I'm really excited about this one. We'll be implementing this and then I plan on giving a tutorial on how to create Mario using this physics engine and we will uh, create a cool game with this. So, and it's also gonna have a level editor and everything. Um, I'll give you a sneak peek of what that's gonna look like as well because I already have the level being able to import some data as well. Okay, and then this is what it looks like. So we have uh, some level data being imported and you will be able to customize these levels and everything as you wish. So this is just sort of, sort of a sneak peek of the series to come. So I hope you guys will watch the Snake series, which is coming up next. If you guys like this, please hit like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.